it's tough to overlook the impacts of a flood to personal property. Now in the fall, here on the banks of the Yellowstone, when the river is low, it's hard to imagine the amount of energy that it took to uproot this massive cottonwood and float it several miles downstream. What seems as an act of destruction is really the mechanics of a healthy, functioning river system. So as a large cottonwood gets knocked down, it's actually kind of the beginning of the story. As that tree gets lodged in the river, it begins to slow the water. And as that water slows, the rock and the sediment deposit behind that tree. Once those deposits are formed behind that tree, they establish the habitat for cottonwood seedlings. So events like 2011, where we get these carpets of cottonwood seedlings that establish, people kind of wonder, well, my gosh, there's you know thousands upon hundreds of thousands of these seedlings out here. This is just gonna choke out the river system if these all become mature. Each age class, you have fewer and fewer trees that survive. Back in 1997, we had a very large flow event. It was one of the largest recorded on the Yellowstone. And those large woody debris piles are those remnant trees that had fallen in that flood and established that island where those cottonwoods that are now 15 years old have gotten established. And so people can look back through history and see these high flow events and actually be able to tie them back to the age of the cottonwoods that they're seeing on the banks. Many of the mature cottonwoods that you see along the Yellowstone today were seedlings deposited during the flood of 1908. This is Mike Gurnett out among Montana's Fish, Wildlife and Parks.